so I went to the club in a revealing dress. My husband didn't like that and did this when I came home. The most unbelievable and unexpected thing happened to me. I was divorced because I had gone to the club in a revealing dress. If I had been told that I was going to get divorced by my husband for something as trivial as that, okay, let me be honest, that wasn't what tore my marriage apart. It was just the key factor that drove it to falling apart. My husband thought I behaved like a child, but I frankly just wanted to live my life. Was there anything wrong with that? If you find anything wrong in that, you're a problem. We had been having problems ever since we decided to get married, and honestly, maybe I shouldn't have gotten married at all. Except the fact that I needed to get married. It wasn't a choice. I thought with marriage, everything would be perfect, and I won't have to be worried about my secret, and I would still get to do what I wanted, but I got the shock of my life. My husband was always emphasizing respect and how my stubbornness was going to lead me into trouble. He hated that I behaved like the Gen Z that I was. Gosh, all these millennial men just don't understand the whole point of life. The whole point of life was to enjoy it and live it to the fullest. Then why did I marry my husband in the first place? Well, like I've already said, I thought it was going to be more fun and I didn't have any choice like I had said before. I didn't know it was going to end this way and my husband was going to be this hard to please. Besides, when were things ever that serious? All because of a little dress. Here's what happened. My sister was throwing a birthday party and I needed to show up and show out. You know, as the sister of the birthday girl. I really don't know why my husband would see anything wrong with that. Plus, I had told him I was the one going to be planning my sister's birthday party, so I really don't know why he would just switch up on me during the party. I hadn't invited him to the after party, but I had thought that was because it was not really his scene. My husband was a prim and proper man and didn't like parties. While I was the party babe, I was the life of the party. So I had only invited him to the formal event of my sister's party. The real party where the main thing was to go down, I hadn't bothered to invite him to it. I had no idea how he even found out that I was at the club and he caught me there in a very revealing dress, going down on a man. The man I had been having an affair with while I had lied to him. Well, in my defense, he knew there was no love between us and I believed he knew I was seeing someone else. He had definitely been tipped off by someone or something. But I hadn't expected his revenge. I had trusted this man with my life and I had never expected this. And do you want to know the weirdest part of it? He had told me that what had made him throw me out wasn't the fact that I had been going down on a man. No, his problem had been the goddamn dress. Can you imagine that? My husband had thrown me out and peeled the worst possible stun on me, not because I had been having an affair, or the fact that I was going down on said affair at a club that was holding my sister's birthday after party. His reason was that I was wearing a revealing dress and he didn't like that. I was as shocked as you reading this presently at that moment. I know this doesn't justify my having an affair when I was married, but the fact that everything was ruined for me all because of a flimsy dress was what was annoying the crap out of me. Besides, my husband hadn't cared about that like I had said above. I will make you understand everything in a bit. I just wanted to rant over the fact that everything I have ever worked for is over now. So there I was at the club having the time of my life and the next thing I knew my husband was looming over me like he was God coming to judge my sins and all the words left my tongue. The first thing out of his mouth had been what are you wearing and he was shaking his head and leaving. I had been too disoriented to even realize what had just happened. It took my sister coming to meet me to tell me that my husband had just stalked off and seemed angry. I had to book a cab and run home but when I got there my things were already being thrown out of the house and my husband was about to slam the door. I had to put myself in between the door and risk being injured just to beg my husband to reconsider. When I thought of what was at stake with losing my husband I had to get down and beg. Then my husband told me I would be getting the divorce papers from his lawyers via email and all the dreams and my career was over once he revealed my secret to the whole world. And this man did. I can't believe that I had thought he was kidding somewhere in the back of my mind. I had to crash at my sister's place that night and the next day I received the divorce papers through email like he had said, and I had brushed it off and went to work like I had been doing before. In the middle of work I got a call from my manager that he wanted to see me, and when I got to his office there were two men inside. Two men that produced their badges immediately I entered into the office. My husband had got me arrested and deported because I was an illegal immigrant in America and he had the power to. That was his revenge for me wearing a revealing dress. Over a matter of minutes my husband had decided to cut off my dreams and career and he didn't stop there. He got my whole family deported because we were illegal immigrants. Well except for my sister I don't know the reason behind that. I don't even know how he had found out that I was an illegal immigrant. I had been careful. I had just told him that the marriage wasn't going to be one of love when we were about to get married. He had even told me he didn't do love, so we had a perfect arrangement. 
Okay, let me start from the beginning because I feel like I've just scattered my thoughts all over the place in narrating my experience with my now ex-husband. I'll call myself Fanny, my nickname that only my family knew. I'm 24 years old and I'm half American, half Indian. The disappearing act of a father knocked up my mother when he had come to India and then hightailed it to the wind. So my grandparents and my mom had illegally come to America in search of greener pastures. By genetics, I was an American, but by birth and every important factor, I was nothing because my mother didn't know squat about my father, so she couldn't claim him. My history is all just a messed up story and something I don't like telling all the time, but I did for the sake of context. My ex-husband will be called Simon for the duration of this narration because he seemed like a Simon. He's 37 years old. I had met Simon when I was working at a local grocery store as a sales clerk. He had come in to buy something and had almost knocked me down with his car while I was walking in the parking lot of the local grocery store about two and a half years ago. He had apologized and had come in to buy something every day since that day till I agreed to go out with him. I had found that weird, by the way, and told him. Anyway, Simon and I started going out on dates and he told me I seemed like a sweet girl and asked me obvious questions about my family background and my schooling. I told him lies, of course, because I was covering up the fact that I was in America illegally. Note, he had asked me to be his girlfriend several times before this, and I had said no. Reason being because I was still stuck up on the boy I had gone out with in college, and he had assured me that he was going to get married to me and make sure I have an American passport, and not have to be deported back if I was ever caught. So when Simon was coming with his propositions, I really wasn't interested in what he had to offer me. But then later down the line, when Simon was becoming too persistent and the boy I liked wasn't coming forward and I was getting closer to getting caught with each breath I took, I had to go with Simon. Yeah, he wasn't what I wanted, but I didn't have any choice. I thought it was going to be easy to be married to Simon, and he also needed me for something. If not, he couldn't be this persistent to date me. I am not saying Simon was a simp, no. He was very assertive with what he wanted, and he was very revengeful. I had been careful not to let it show that I was in desperate need, so I hadn't told him that I had something to hide. I just told him that I was stuck up on someone. That's why I wasn't going to take his proposition to date me. But he was persistent, and when I didn't see any other option, I had to stick with Simon. I accepted to be his girlfriend. And then I introduced him to my mom and grandparents. I think this was where I made my first mistake. This was before he popped the question. It was Thanksgiving, and I always celebrated with my family. So he had happened to be with me that day and had followed me. Then my grandma took him on a walk, probably to do the fatherly talk, and I think that's where it must have slipped. Or my grandpa had told him. At this point, I wouldn't even be surprised that that was the explanation, because there was no other way that Simon would have known my secret, enough to use it against me. Do you guys think that is justified? Anyway, three months after dating, Simon asked me to be his bride. That was one of the good things that happened to me. I was finally going to stop looking over my shoulder or feel my head almost beating out of my chest whenever I saw a policeman. I was finally free of that burden when Simon popped the question. I had said yes. And then my husband had asked me if I was still stuck up on the love I had before, and had told me it was cool if I was so long as I respected him and stayed faithful. This was when I had told him that I didn't think that our marriage was one of love. Well, I thought I could live with that. I thought that marriage to Simon meant I got to do what I wanted and still be married. I didn't know I was marrying someone as strict as my husband. You all can call me stuck up or whatever. I had been called worse, but marriage wasn't funny. I thought it was going to be sweet. At least we enjoyed each other's company while we were dating, but it was as if as I got married to Simon, he just switched up on me. Like he had gotten what he wanted, so he couldn't care much for my feelings or anything, but cared about what I wore, ate, who I talked to. He had even gotten me my job. He wanted to control me. Can you imagine that? I had read stories on here saying how their husbands had been controlling and everything, and I don't think there was anyone as controlling as Simon. I felt coddled with him like I was on a harness and he was holding my leash. This would sound like I'm exaggerating or making it up, but I swear I'm not. Still, it doesn't justify me cheating, but I had no choice. I was feeling suffocated in my marriage. I missed my single life, and if not for the damn passport, I wouldn't have even entertained the thought of getting married. But then I had to be born the useless way I was, and life still ended up messing with me. Maybe I deserved it, in your opinion. However, in my opinion, I didn't regret it. I regretted the way my life was now ruined, but I didn't regret cheating on Simon. I remember when I used to see married couples shopping together and holding hands and maybe pushing a trolley. Simon didn't look like a man that had been capable of laughing yet alone holding hands. Sure, he had smiled and laughed, forced to laugh more of now that I think about, when he had been persistent on dating me, but I hadn't seen it for what it was. It was in marriage I got to meet his controlling true colors. 
I had wolfed it down for a year, but I was done having it. So I had sought an out, a way to be happy and still be married to my husband. I had confided in my sister and she had said she knew a way to help me. I could be going out on dates with men on Tinder, meet different people and vibe with them and still stay married and my husband would never find out. I was like Eureka. What I had been needing was to take a breather and meet other people and as long as I didn't cheat with them I could stay faithful to my husband. My sister then agreed to move in with me so she could cover up for me sometimes when I had to go out and meet guys. It was the perfect arrangement and the perfect way to make everything work out in my marriage. I had thought that maybe if I went out and met other guys I would get to appreciate my husband more. No harm, no foul. So I created a Tinder account and started searching for prospective men. My plan with my sister was going well. I closed from work by four in the evening and then came back home and changed into my date outfit. Before this time, my sister would have done all the chores and I just had to thank her and kiss her on the cheek before Zooming. I met a lot of nice and funny guys who had no clue I was married nor the fact that I was an illegal immigrant. My color gave off the fact that I was definitely an immigrant LOL. I had fun without my husband finding out or he knew about all my shenanigans and just decided to keep quiet about it. Anyway, I was having the time of my life and going to different places. The club, various restaurants, parks, but one thing I never did was kiss my date. That I can stand by. I never kissed any of them. And I did so out of respect for my husband. Everything was going well, I was finally getting my spark back and everything. My sister continued being a good cover-up and didn't ever snitch on me. I literally couldn't have asked for anyone else. I don't regret doing this because I was living the life I wanted without my husband's rules on how I should dress and what I could eat and how I carried myself. He wasn't with me to tell me what to do, and he never saw me when I was leaving the house so he didn't know what I was up to and what I was wearing while I was up to my shenanigans. I really don't care what you all have to say about that. It was my life to live. And besides, it wasn't as if I was jumping from one man's bed to the next. I was just hanging out with them like friends. It was strictly platonic even when one had tried to grab the round balls on my chest, I had completely shut him down. My using Tinder was the perfect thing to happen to me ever since I got married until my husband caught me. Well, not truly caught me on a date. He caught me sneaking out on a date. I had been wearing a short dress just like the one he had caught me wearing in the club before he had sent me divorce papers as a consolation prize and my deportation ticket back to India as the main price. He was supposed to have been at work so I had come home as usual and my husband was sitting in the living room and watching a TV. I couldn't allow anything to ruin the date I was about to go to for me so I had decided to risk it and go for dinner. As I was descending the stairs my husband was waiting for me at the bottom of the stairs and his eyes were already telling me that I should go up and change. This was where we had our first quarrel. I told him what I felt of him and what he can do with his control tendencies. Shove it, of course. Then I left the house on my date. I know what you're thinking. I had disrespected him. He had no right to tell me to change. So I had stormed out of the house. When I got back, my sister let me in and Simon didn't say anything about the confrontation and where I had been. I knew I should have found it strange that he didn't want to know where I had gone in such a dress. I should have known something was up from then because we started quarreling more often and instead of indulging me in the argument, he would show that he was the mature person and leave me there to chew my words. I recall on one occasion when he was complaining of my attitude and how I wasn't serious in my approach to things. This had happened because at a gathering I had called everyone guys and not offered them the appropriate respect that they deserved. Calling a group of people guys wasn't an abomination. It is the 21st century for crying out loud and I had told him. This was what had brought on the quarrel and while I was busy trying to argue my points and show him that there was nothing wrong in what I had said, Simon had just walked away. Yep, while I was mid-sentence. It had just shown he wasn't interested in knowing whatsoever was about to come out from my mouth. With this I got more frustrated and instead of stopping the Tinder dates I had decided to stop because the last one had been so boring. My date had showed up late and when he had arrived he made the whole thing freakishly boring. But with the stunt Simon had pulled with making me feel little with his derogatory act and had made me want to prove to myself that I was wanted. So I had gone on another date and then I had met the boy that had promised me he was going to marry me while we were still in college. I wouldn't have believed our paths would cross ever since he left me to go and do whatever. And at that moment he was on Tinder looking for a girl that he could settle with and the universe brought him to me. How hilarious was this P? I met Tom when I was in college and he had been everything I wanted in a man. But circumstances had come into play and I had ended up with my husband. Tom didn't know I had illegally smuggled myself into America, but he was going to marry me. And I would have married him based on the fact that I loved him, and not only to get the American Immigration Service off my back. That was what I had married my husband for. 
Tom had asked if I was married. I had said no because that would have made him want to stop associating with me. And I had just began to find my happiness even while married to a man that I didn't like and just had to. So I thought to myself that I was going to stick with Tom for a while, even if it meant sneaking out of my house all the days. Besides, I had my sister to cover up for me. Feel free to judge me, but I had the time of my life with Tom. He treated me like a human being and showed me what it was like to love someone and be with the person. I didn't sleep with him at first. It was just going out and eating out and being adventurous with him. We went to a lot of restaurants and lovely places. At first, I was careful to avoid my husband not finding out that I was seeing another man behind his back, but I guess at some point I just stopped caring. In my head, if I ended things with my husband, I could get with Tom. My husband didn't know what I was up to, and frankly, it didn't seem like he cared. I'd even left the house while he was there, and he hadn't even asked me anything. Of course, I was well-dressed and didn't wear anything revealing, and he just allowed me to leave like I was his neighbor and not his wife. Not gonna lie that it pissed me off a lot. But I had consoled myself with the fact that I was going to meet Tom. Tom was the best in everything that I wanted in a man, and since my marriage with my husband wasn't one of love, and he didn't seem to be complaining about me leaving the house and not knowing where I was going, I had even confronted my husband once. I had deliberately left the house when he was around. I had made sure to walk around him and see if he would ask me where I was going in the evening. But he didn't ask me. I had even suspected that he had found out about it. I had a feeling he had found out that I was seeing someone else. Because who else wouldn't have asked their wives about their whereabouts after work? No husband would do that. I didn't store it in mind for too long, though. I had Tom as backup. If my husband decided to play smart, I would double-cross him. Now that I think about it, I had been so stupid. I should have seen the signs of my husband's prodding. My family hadn't been the one to expose that we were illegal immigrants, or maybe they had maybe let it out a little, but there was always a man sneaking around. How am I just piecing this together, lol? My husband had hired a PI on me. I had thought it was his best friend. Now that I think about it, it just didn't correlate. How come I had never seen said best friend since, and why was he always following me around? Yeah, my husband had definitely been in on me having an affair with another man early, and had planned his revenge in the best of ways. I should have figured this out since from the first moment his best friend had been introduced at dinner. I had just been overwhelmed over the fact that my husband could have friends and I hadn't seen the weirdness. Then I started seeing my husband's best friend everywhere, near my office. When I had caught him there, he had said he was around the corner to see a colleague. And I had believed him because said colleague joined us later on in the coffee shop where we had gone to catch up. Then the next place I saw him was when I had been grocery shopping. The story he had sold then was that he was stocking up his pantry since he had just moved back to the city and my husband had told him this was the best place to shop. I can even recall I had seen him once when I was hanging out with Tom. He hadn't been my husband's best friend. The man had been sent to watch my every move, to spy on me. And I had been so aloof. If I had known, I would have covered up my tracks and my life wouldn't be totally over right now. How could my husband do this to me? And Tom... Let me not even get started on how that chapter ended. But I'll tell it all, there's nothing left to hide, and most definitely not from you guys on this platform. You all don't know me personally. Anyway, my whole life began falling apart from the moment I became bold enough to be leaving the house without my husband's permission. This was when my sister's birthday party was around the corner. Everything was just a ticking time bomb. And I had caused it all. No matter how much I tried to be defensive about the whole situation. It had all been my fault. I disobeyed my husband after he told me not to wear a revealing dress and had the audacity to have an affair while still married. I deceived two men. And I deserved blah, I can't even complete it in my head. My ex-husband went too far with his plan to make me regret my actions. He could have just had me deported and left my family. Before I get back to ranting, let me complete my downfall of an experience with life. Ever since I was a teenager, I never once dreamed this was the way my life would go. I always thought I would get married to the right man who loved me and was rich and live happily ever after with him. However, I didn't get that. Anyway, I was preparing for my sister's birthday party because that girl had done a lot for me. I was doing this while Simon had his spy tailing my every move. I was also seeing Tom on the side and envisioning how I was going to marry him after I divorced Simon, and I would have everything I truly wanted. My sister's party day arrived, and in the evening we made our way to where I had picked for a formal dinner. I hadn't invited Tom for dinner because I didn't want to poke karma in the back, so I had invited him to the club, while I went with Simon for dinner. After the dinner, I had told my husband that I was going to follow my sister and her friends to the club because I was their designated driver for the night, and he had agreed like that. He has just told me to make sure I got home early. 
He made me believe he believed me. I got to the club with my sister and her friends and changed into the dress that I had brought for the club, the dress that had broken the camel's back. In all honesty, it wasn't that bad. It was short, sure, but all the bad parts were appropriately hidden. I really hadn't expected my husband to blow up like he did. But considering he had warned me that time and I had failed to listen and warn an even worse one, I guess I got what was coming for me. I saw Tom and I was so happy to see him and I moved him to the dance floor immediately to show my moves. Then the next thing I knew Simon was looming over me and I was just shocked straight out of my mind. My husband had come to the club, I was still in place until my sister came and pulled me out of shock, telling me that it was Simon. That had just left. I ran like never before. And you all know what ensued from there. Simon made me sign those divorce papers that night while he told me it was the fact that I had worn a revealing dress that was why he didn't want to be married to me anymore. This was before he ordered me to leave his house or he would call the police. I was scared of anything police related so I had to leave without further argument. I was about to be deported but I didn't give up hope. I felt I still had Tom Lowell, my backup plan. Nope, I definitely didn't have Tom. After I had signed the divorce papers with my husband and I was done begging him to take me back, I had gone to meet my second option, my second base. Don't judge me for keeping options, it's not as if I was the first person to keep backups for when things didn't work out. So I went to see Tom two weeks later. I had just two more weeks to sort out my business here in America before I got booted out. I knocked on Tom's door. He hadn't given me his house address. I was in a bind so I had to do anything I could to get myself out of said bind. A woman answered Tom's door and called herself his fiance. I know what you're thinking and I had thought the same thing too until Tom had come out to explain what was going on. I had thought he had been playing me all along while he had a fiance stuck up somewhere. Apparently it didn't take Tom up to two weeks before he had put a ring on his fiance's finger. He had the two of us on as options just like I had him as an option. He knew there was something up with me with the way I had always been careful when I had him drop me off or how I had always met him at our place of date choice but never at my home. He had figured he didn't want to get involved in the mess that was my life and boom it turned out that I was married and wanted to trick him. With that he sent me away from his house. This was not how my life was supposed to go. Two weeks later I was escorted to America and the whole details are too sordid to relive. I was disgraced and disappointed all because of a little dress. Everything is looking rough for my family now. And me. I never would have toured this path if I had known it would turn out like this. Nobody deserved to go through what I went through. Lesson learnt big time, Redditors. Update, hey guys. It's been a year since I uploaded my story and you all wouldn't believe the shocking betrayal that happened. My husband and sister got married. Can you imagine a much deeper betrayal? I swear the day I found out I almost ended my life. They were loving each other behind my back. How cruel could life be? Now this was why he hadn't had her deported. I hadn't even known this was at play. Heck, I hadn't even known my sister wasn't with us until we got to India. Well, they got married, and there was nothing I could do about it. My actions kept teaching me serious life lessons, and I just want my life to even out. Hopefully, I don't kill myself before things start looking up.